when you are up, you upping your game to a point where you're ready to buy a very quality light, you'll look at something like this and know what you're looking at. And more importantly, as you're looking at lower cost, lower quality lights, you have something to compare it to. So let's take a look at this thing. First thing to notice is the quality of the bag, zippered, carrying handle, really nice. Let's take a look at what's inside. First thing I notice is this. This is an adapter plate. It allows you to hook up your Sony NPF batteries to power the light. And it also has this on here, which I'll explain in a moment. It's for higher end batteries. Next, we have one end of the uh, power for the AC adapter. And you'll notice that this sort of looks like a XLR jack. It's just, it's quality, uh, Connection. Next we have the unit itself. Um, display, which we'll show in a minute. Uh, this is the other end that uh, connects into that adapter. And uh, right there. And right there that connects into the light. Here's that battery thing I was talking about here. Um, this is for what's called a V mount. You'll notice the little V here, which I appreciate they include the adapter plate for. And these are for these larger batteries that I've reviewed before. I'll put the link up somewhere up here. I think it goes there. No, over there, over there. I think it pops up over there on a uh, Indy Pro Tools battery that you can use for this unit. In, in this type of studio environment, I don't use batteries. I always plug things in. We'll take a look at this unit too in a moment. Next is this little guy. This is just, uh, it screws on to the power unit right there. And it's for the remote control, little Wi-Fi thing, so you can remote control this thing from quite a distance. But another power cord. And then we have this guy, which is this guy. It's it's just it's just a beast. Um, I'll show you some of the really cool features of this. Let's put this thing together and we'll just go through some of the, the really cool things on this. I just got to note that, um, nope. Other than this ring, which is what you want, again, I'll describe why in a moment. Other than this ring, every single, everything on this is made out of high quality machined or cast metal. Now the other thing I got with this was an extra box, uh, which is great because I wanted these accessories. This I'll show you in a moment. Oh, that's noisy, isn't it? Um, this is a soft box, which you'll see in a moment. These little guys, orange, blue, like you need me telling you the colors and yellow, which I'll also cover what these are for in a minute. And let's not forget, of course, white, it's diffuser. These are, uh, this is a mount. I believe it's a Bowens type mount. This little honeycombed guy, which I'll also show you. And then uh, we have this, which Let's call it a snoot, but basically, again, it has a little honeycomb pattern. It's for, for directing the light. Um, cool. And then this little guy, which I'll also show you in a minute. So we got all our parts here. Let's put it together and I'll, I'll show you this light and all the different things that uh, it can do and includes. Now, normally, I wouldn't rig this light up like this. I'd put it on a light stand. I'd probably hang the controller unit down below, there's uh, the cord. There's plenty of it. There's got to be a good, it's got to be at least 10, 15, maybe 20 feet long when I get it, which is fine. It, it shouldn't matter now that I have the control box here. I just wanted to see how I rig this up. Let's zoom in on this thing. And specifically, let's take a look at the different features of the lights and the controller itself. Well, let's start with the light itself. Obviously, I have excellent connector on here. Um, let's remove these barn doors. So 
you can actually take a look at the light. Um, everything about this is either cast or machined. It's, I mean, everything, every single piece, including the handle. It's, uh, it's just a really nice unit. On the back, we have some heat dissipation and over on the top, of course, we have the Fresnel and the LED bulb in the front. And uh, here's another thing I really like about it. This very large, large pivoting knob. Um, if I let this go, I like the fact that it doesn't just drop. It's, there's little grooves in here. So you can put it here. Grooves are hold, holding. That is not going anywhere. Some of these lights where it's just sort of a compression. I don't know if you could see that over here. Right in here, there's these grooves that, that lock and they engage in place. So when you lock this thing down, instead of being a compression, it actually locks together. You don't have the light warming up and slowly tilting or somebody knocking it. It just, that's not going anywhere unless you actually take a hammer or something and really yank this thing and strip these out. Um, that's just, that's beautiful. I wish all lights would use this type of mechanism. Um, I don't know how many times I've been on a set or something like that and you come along and all of a sudden your lighting's a little off and you look over and, and somebody leaned on a light or somebody moved it or knocked it and because you don't have these compression type locking uh, mixture knobs on here, the light just, just gets yanked out of place and then lighting people go crazy or you go crazy just, ah. <laughs> um, really, really nice feature, this right here. I know, I know, I'm getting all excited about a knob. It's, you don't see this on lights under a thousand dollars. Really good engineering here. Let's turn this on. This would be the unit that would be hanging down below the light. Uh, simply over here, you have a, a switch, it's a toggle switch, toggle switch, you either turn it on there, which uh, says I'm using remote control, or you turn it that way, saying I'm all ready to go and I, I wanna use uh, this unit here. Um, I don't have the remote control, I don't know what happened to it, I'm not sure if it wasn't shipped to me by accident, it happens. Um, I have another Falcon light that I use and I can't find a remote control either, my bad. Um, but it's okay, we can control it this way. It remembers where I set it. I just noticed I set it down to 0% at 5600K, so it wouldn't blow your face off when I turn this on. Uh, simply the touch controls are beautiful. You can toggle the touch controls. Right now it's jumping by there's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that's 10%. I can also hold it down and it will jump up. That's getting pretty bright. Uh, let's just leave it at 50% for now. Um, and then of course your K values, uh, it's 5,600K and I can just drop it all the way down to 3,000K. So right now we're sitting at 3,000K which gives you a yellowish type light and then obviously you would reset your white balance, which I haven't done for this light. Um, and you can toggle it up and dial in and adjust the exact K value. Let me turn down the intensity here. So at least you can see what I'm doing. That's about right. So now, you, now you'll be able to see this here, uh, turning down. The K value, we're gonna go more yellow turning up the K value, just can yank up into white. And we'll just leave it right there for now. Uh, very handy. This is the, uh, the connector for the remote, which as I said, I couldn't find. This is how I power it. And again, you have a, a one, two toggle switch on the end. This is the hanger. You would hang this off your light stand and there's plenty of cord for this charger and adapter to the wall. And again, um, Using that V mount, they include a little clip here, which allows you to clip that on and Velcro this to something and hook it to something so it doesn't go anywhere. And you can also remove this V mount clip and just use an entire big block battery here, which will give you hours and hours of lighting fun.
Pretty cool. So let's look at uh, a couple of these. Oops, I touched the touch the value here. Let's look at these various attachments and what it does. As I point this at the camera, I'm just going to leave it right about there so you can see what's happening. Let me hang this light down here. Now I'll show you this later. This is the uh, Fresnel. It's an adjustable light. Let me turn this sideways and you'll see what's happening here. Fresnels allow you to adjust the beam and the angle of what's happening here. And if you watch right in here as I adjust this, you'll see how, how long that is. Now watch as I adjust this right here. Watch the length of this. So that's how Fresnels work. The light inside this whole unit, the light inside from, from the, where the lens is the light, it, you extend it and it narrows the beam or you compress it and it allows the light to come closer up and creates a wider beam. Uh, I'm going to throw this thing on the back of the wall a little bit to, wow, that's really bright at 10%. I'll throw this on a uh, screen in the back so you can see exactly what's happening in a moment, but I want to show you these, <laughs> this ton of different attachments that uh, comes with this kit. Wow, that's it. Uh, I turned this down to, it's at 1%. It's, it's still pretty bright. Wow. I wanted to show you this. This is probably, this guy's probably one of the most important things to this light kit other than, uh, well, let me go over this first. You have these barn doors, which of course, barn doors are, you know, you, you probably know what barn doors are. They allow you to shape and sculpt the light. These are quite interesting as they have additional little wings here. Like, so you could take this and really cut off the light on each of these two here. And it would allow you to actually sculpt a very square light like that. Along with that, it has little clips here on the side. Those clips are for gels if you want to put a gel on this light. Um, this is all metal, very high quality. Uh, sometimes you'll see these things with these really crummy clips and stuff on them. This is not the case with these. Um, the whole deal with this light is, again, all cast metal and this clip, which is super, super tight and awesome. Um, you just slip it into these guides in here. which uh, sometimes, there we go. You slip it in these guys right here. You take this clip, you put it in there. This is supposed to turn like that. And then what that allows you to do, and again, I'll show you later, is let's move these wings in. That allows you to do things and sculpt the light. Maybe you want a, maybe you want a type of light that's like really tight like that, you know, where you have, have a very focused rectangular band. Um, I really like these. I haven't seen these often. Those little flippy out arms, which are, are cool. So that allows me to get more of a square light because a lot of times with these barn doors, the way they're sculpted, you, you have light coming out and, and it's just not quite... Anyway, you get it like that. Let's take this off. The barn doors. Now... This guy, this attachment here, um, this is this is your golden ticket. It has a locking mechanism. This is plastic, but that's okay. It's on the front of the light. You don't want things getting really hot. This won't get really hot. It has a little release mechanism right there, if you can see that. What's the big deal with this? Well, let me show you. Let's start with... Uh, Let's start with these uh, honeycomb sculpting things. Here, if you can see that, it has a honeycomb type pattern and it basically sculpts a light. With any of these attachments, you just lock it in. So now I've locked that in. That's the light end. Again, just like my barn doors, I drop this guy in here, 
I lock it down. Ingenious that this is made so this doesn't do anything. And then you get that honeycomb pattern which you can dial in however you want. That's one attachment. Let's pull that off. I love this where I can just unlock. It locks so it doesn't move around and come, but you can just simply move this pivot to pin, pull it off, and you're done. All right. Next attachment is this uh, snoot, which is pretty cool. Again, you just lock it in place. This takes and really focuses and directs the light down this tunnel. You get a really, let me show you. Uh, again, we just attach this like we did the other one, lock it down, and you get more of a directed round like, like a spotlight type thing. Very cool. They also include a rather more open honeycomb pattern on this one, and then uh, one that's, you know, tighter. I don't know if you could see those. And you just pop this guy on here. That's the, uh, that's the more open one, and here's the denser one. If you can see the difference there, I, I am going to show you all this stuff on the back when I get through the mounting. There's a lot to this light. It's not going to be a short video. Okay. Uh, here we have like a white diffuser. Again, this just fits in here. Twist turn locks into place. Drop it into the light. We have a more of a diffused light coming out of this thing, which is cool. Uh, what's also cool, again, let's unlock that. Let's mount our blue. Now we have another light, like uh, if you wanted some sort of backlight or you were lighting someone on stage or something, you want to hit them in the back, or, or maybe it's a really yellow area and you want to cut down on the blue. Of course, you could use gels for that. Uh, these are nice. Uh, instead of going with like a full RGB light and playing with the colors, uh, you could do some really nice things with these. Um, you have the blue. That's what that looks like. Simple unlock. The orange one, just drop it in here. That's really cool. Now we have more of an orange thing here. And last but not least, we have a yellow. And there's our yellow. Again, I haven't really reset the white balance to this light. I'm hoping these colors come through correctly, um, but that's a yellow. Uh, this system is slick. I mean, I have yellow, orange, white, blue, a snoot, a snoot cap, the honeycomb, another snoot cap, a little wider with a honeycomb. I have barn doors. We're not even close to being done. I have a large honeycomb which I could mount onto this unit. And yes, there is more. Check this guy out. How about that, huh? Nice, soft, all around light. Again, just lock in the light, drop this in. We got a nice all around light, which, which it's, it's kind of doing like this, but it's very diffused. Let me just yank this up. I want to see what this looks like. Yeah, that creates just a, a just a beautiful, beautiful, soft, lovely light uh, that can be used in a number of places. Let me drop this back down here. That's one percent, by the way. And 
And there we go. And we're not done yet. There's a soft box. Collapsible, it's just all folded up soft box, just like any soft box. It's got some pins coming up with this white diffuser on the front, um, which mounts to our uh, lovely dovely adapter here. You just mount this onto your light, same way you do everything else. Lock it down, adjust it, and there's your uh, and there's your soft box. Let's yank this up. Yeah, that's a lot of light. Definitely a lot of light, but it's beautifully, beautifully diffused light. Let's yank it back down. Very nice. Okay, so I think I've uh, I think I've covered all the um, different attachments and and things like that on this light. So let's let's uh, get this on a I don't know maybe I'll use a yeah I'll use a, a white screen and and let me show you the intensity of light and what it looks like and uh, I think you'll be impressed. I'm already impressed with the build quality and all these attachments. Um, but let's just take a look at the light on an actual white screen. Okay, what I've done is uh, this light is currently sitting. Uh, it's got to be, I didn't measure it, it's at least six feet. From the back of that uh, white area, I have currently have the camera set to, on the controller, 5600K and I set the camera also to be exactly 5600K. So as I change colors and lights, they may look a little weird. Uh, I just wanted to show you a few things. Uh, currently, again, I was talking about a Fresnel if you're not familiar with it. I'm dialing this uh, knob on top here. And as you see, it changes the width of the light. Um, right now, that back is probably, oh hey, I could do those, uh, those things. Right now, that back is probably eight foot. I'm currently lighting. It looks like there's some fall off over here, uh, way over there, but it's definitely, but I got maybe 12, 16, 20, 20 feet of light washing across the back there. Um, you wouldn't normally use this light like this. For instance, you know, using the light like this with the Fresnel with uh, basically no attachment on the front, uh, you know, you wouldn't normally do that. So the next thing I want to take a look at is I wanted to show you some of these attachments. Remember we talked about this soft box and what it does. So let's just get something that's a little bit harsher. Um, these rings that are occurring over here, I don't know if you can see these. A part of that is because I have no attachment and I'm just using the light bare. Um, not sure about those. There's a little bit of fringing on here. I wouldn't use the light by itself again. So let's, uh, Let's attach the soft box, see what we got. There's the soft box. As you can see, it's a much more pleasant, softer light. I don't want you to get the idea that uh, this thing isn't bright. Uh, this is with the soft box. Check this out. It's pretty bright. I wouldn't want to stand in front of that light right now, um, but you can see the softer light. What what happens is how it softens the light up, and that's why you use soft boxes is to give a nice, nicer tone to the talent or what you're shooting uh, back there. Let's remove the soft box. I love this mounting and unmounting. 
Let's try a little honeycomb guy. Throw that on here. Now you'll notice it's, let me run this back a little bit. I don't know if you can really see that. Um, you're, you're not gonna really get a honeycomb pattern. Let's open this guy up so we can see what we're doing here. You're not really gonna get this honeycomb pattern, but you're gonna get more of a spot type of light over here. Let's look at the difference here. You see that? Full light. That's going to diffuse it, make it a lot softer. It's still a little harsh, but it just, it just gives it a better look. Let's check out the next thing. Let's put the snoot on here. Now you can see that, uh, in particular, if I were going to use a snoot, I'd use it like that. Um, it, you're basically directing the light. It's basically turning this in, into quite a spotlight. And then we have these two connections on the front, a tight and looser honeycomb. You see that? Now watch when I put this on. Quite tighter. Quite a different light. Here's the, the real tight one, right? So you got that. It's, it gives it quite an interesting effect. And then you can, you know, of course, you can play with the Fresnel itself, move it around, move it in and out. Right there, I have quite a nice soft spot it looks like I have some rings out in here, and I think that's my monitor, but I'm not sure. But that would be a nice spot on someone. I, I, I'm afraid to stand in front of this because it's going to blow my face off. And I am now totally blinded. I, I don't think I've gotten across to you how bright this light is because it's really, really, really bright. Okay, let's play with a few other things here. Let's pull the snoot off. Now we're just adding our white, I'm going to call it a gel for now. And as you can see, it's a little bit white, adds a little bit of yellow to it because it's not perfectly white, but it just gives it a nice soft effect. A little more color. See the bits of color in there? That's because of this. Let's try the next one. We're going to try the blue. Obviously, again, white balance. There's the blue. That's a nice effect. I'd probably dial this thing in if I wanted to create some sort of effect, maybe like that. And I have a nice blue light, uh, beautiful for a background light or for uh, cosmetic lighting. Orange. And that's really orange. That's pretty. A uh, nice little orange, uh, for, again, for a background or something, or if you have a lot of, uh, you know, heavy yellow, uh, excuse me, heavy blue light going on, uh, this would be nice to offset that. Uh, that's cool. And lastly, let's check out our yellow one. And there's our yellow. So I definitely have lots of great options for uh, changing color on this without having to have an actual RGB light. Um, and again, I haven't even messed with the uh, K value over here, the uh, 3000 to 5500K, excuse me, 5600K, which we'll look at in a minute. Let's pull that off.
I'm going to check our bold now. You'll see how that just creates a quite a quite a different effect. It's uh, quite a different effect. Uh, you could use this for uh, lighting, maybe uh, showing like there were lights off. Uh, you could bounce something in the back. You could use it behind a person. It's even soft enough to really create a Yeah, it could create a, a really nice effect on a person, or you could drop it uh, above them and create a nice uh, wash on them. I, I, I love this. I, I really like this uh, this unit and the way that works. Of course, finally, we have our barn doors, which I'll throw on here so you can see what's happening here. Now again, with barn doors, you see what we're doing here is we're basically crafting the light. Right now I have a strip like that. Maybe I want to do a Some kind of weirdo thing looking like that. I could certainly, that's the reason why if I wanted to craft a horizontal, that's why this is supposed to turn. Because when you turn this, you can craft your strip of light however you want it. That's why the front of these turn. Maybe we want to put a slash on there or something and, and have it look like that. I don't know why, it just would depend on your lighting situation. Um, again, if I tried to, craft something like that. I could also play with the Fresnel. I could soften it up and make it more of a blobby type thing. Or I could focus it in and just get it a lot sharper for what I'm needing to do. I wanted to show you these. Those are those little flaps that I was telling you about on here. You can do all sorts of little interesting things. Creating some sort of teethy looking view. Again, you can do all sorts of things with this, this particular type of uh, barn door setup. It just depends on your imagination and, and what you want to do with this thing. Um, you know, sometimes you can even take barn doors if you have the right light and everything else, and you could do weird things with the background as someone's talking, although that's a bit disco-y. Um, and there you go. I, I, I definitely like this light. Let's check it out. That's pretty nice. I'll have to check in my computer to see if What I'm seeing here, let me move this guy a little bit. I think that's my camera. Um, I'm seeing some color fringing around here and some edges, some, some a bit of a green tint or something. Um, I don't see it with my naked eye at all. I see nothing with my naked eye, but my monitor looks like it's fooling me. It just may be my monitor. We'll just see in post what happens, and hopefully that monitor doesn't screw me up. And there you go. That's the Falconized Pulsar P5TD Fresnel LED light. Um, Falconized makes some great lighting products. You may want to check them out. Uh, if you're in the market for this or need something like this, definitely check it out. Hopefully, going over all the different features of this light, you can make a balanced a sort of decision if you happen to be you know, buying these lower end lights. You can happen to make some balanced decision going, okay, this is important, this is not important, this is no good, this is good. Oh yeah, that falconized light includes this. Um, do I really need that? Is that really important? You're not going to go wrong buying a light like this. And if you're getting into higher end or, or production type things or where you're actually making money at the videos you're making, uh, yeah. 
definitely check this out. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. I'm often asked why I don't re- Airplane.